Hello, welcome to Southern Wreaths. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Today I'm going to show you how I made this floral wreath without a grapevine. I'm going to use a wire frame and these are the flowers I'm using. I'm going to start by trimming all my flowers and I like to use a magazine holder from Dollar Tree just to stick the flowers in. It has holes. It's just easier. I'm going to go through and cut each individual stem. Um, if you wanted to keep them bundled together, you could, depending on what kind of bouquet you have. And I'll try to remember to list what kind of flowers I use underneath. If anyone's interested in following me on social media, you can find me on Instagram at Southern Wreaths More on Facebook at Southern Wreaths, and I also have a Facebook group called Southern Wreaths and More. I would love to see any of the wreaths you've made, especially if you do any um, based on my videos. That would be amazing. Um, I also have all of these links in the description below. Depending on what kind of flowers you use, you may want to go through and glue them with hot glue. I pulled each individual top off and glued it to the stem. It's not necessary if you buy a higher quality floral but from Dollar Tree they like to pop off and I want to make sure nothing's going to come undone. And I decided to take the leaves off of those berries. I didn't like the leaves. So I played around different with different ways of making my bundles to attach them to the frame. Um, and I finally found what worked for me. I was going to use floral wire but the zip ties held a lot better. So I just make my bouquet and I kind of make it long and skinny. And then I'll play around with it so I can see all of the leaves and the flowers. You want to make sure you can see all parts of it. All right, and then holding it, you don't want to let go once you're happy with the way it looks. You'll just add a zip tie around it. Before you pull it all the way, you kind of push the zip tie towards the base where all the flowers are. And then I'm going to pull it extremely tight so it doesn't come undone. And just because I didn't feel like that was going to hold it as well as I wanted to, I'm going to go through and add hot glue around it. Probably don't have to do that. I just felt like it held it better and I didn't have to worry about it. And I did take the time to arrange each one before I added it, but you always end up fluffing it once it's on the frame too. But this is a great way to save some money because great binaries can be expensive. So I'm just using a Dollar Tree frame for a dollar. And I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue. I don't think it matters what kind of glue you use, but that's the one that works well for me. And before it dries completely, I'm gonna take another zip tie and add it into the glue be very careful with this part because you could burn yourself. But this way I knew for sure it wasn't going to go anywhere once it dried. And I played around with how I was going to attach it to the frame um, with my other bundle. And instead of turning every single leaf, I just decided to trim these away. Then it helped by open them, opening them all up first. And I'll probably leave about half an inch to an inch for each stem. I need new wire cutters. After I got all of the stems trimmed down, I'm pushing them over the zip ties. And this just made kind of like a little cage so that I could attach it to the frame with another zip tie. I'm attaching it one to each crossbar. There are six crossbars total. I did run out of flowers when I was done, so I had to use some that I had on hand, but it worked out. I'll try to remember to count how many bundles I used so you know what to get. But I pushed the little, I don't know what to call it, I guess a cage through the frame, and then I'm going to attach it to the crossbar with the zip tie. And I'm making sure that I get through as many stems as I can. You 
you might have to fight with it for a minute. And if you would rather use floor wire, you can. I just don't feel like it holds as well. And don't worry too much if your bundle shifts while you're tightening it. You can always go back through and move it around. And I did put two zip ties on each one, kind of make like a crisscross. And this was just, again, to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. I don't want anything to fall off. And I'll go through and do that at each crossbar. And I'll show you how I did this one more time. I had the hot glue. I did kind of let it dry for just a second, kind of spinning it around. So I didn't want it too, too hot. But I did want it to still be mushy when I add the zip tie, just so the zip tie glues to the stems as well. All of this base floral that I'm putting down, I got from Dollar Tree, but the berries I add later, I got, I believe, at a flea market. But I think they came from Hobby Lobby. So you can mix the more expensive with the cheaper stuff and it still looks good. And you don't have to open them. If you have really good wire cutters, you can probably cut them all at once. Mine are not that great, so I had to do them individually. So it made it easier to just spread them all out. And then if this hurts your hands, you can always use something to help you push down the stems. Or if you find a different way to attach them. And here I'm just going to show you, you stick it all the way through so that the stems are on the other side of the frame. And that way if it does kind of want to pull through, it's not going to be able to. But you can see with all the pulling and stuff, I it was necessary for me to glue each flower to the stem. Just because Dollar Tree flowers will pop off easily. I really love the blue they have this year. They have blue pumpkins and blue leaves. Alright, so now I'm on the last one and you can see that there's holes in between each section. If you buy enough floral and you want to keep it all the same, then you can just add some in between there. I did save some pieces that I'm going to mix with the berries that I'm using. But I kind of like how it made like a pattern. And I am spreading them out as much as I can to cover the frame. So when you look from the outside or the inside, you can't see the frame. So these are the berries I'm using. And I did go through and pull some of the leaves off. And I'm gluing them to the actual berry pick towards the top. And I'm mixing them with some of the flowers that I have left over. I did run out of flour, so I had to go through and pull some that I felt like were extra and was already in there. So since you know ahead of time that you'll need enough, just make sure you save enough to go with it. One or two per section should be okay. And you do the same thing you do with the other one where you gather them all together and then attach it with a zip tie. I'm going to do the smaller ones the same as the big ones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess stem at the bottom. And then I'm going to add the hot glue and another zip tie. It's hard to see, but these berries have a little bit of a greenish tint to them. And they kind of work to match with the hydrangeas and the berries, the giant berries. I guess they're a little more yellow, but it all works together. All right, so I'm going in between the sections and seeing how it looks. And I do go through at the end and fill in any holes that I have, but I don't do those in bundles. I just attach them to the frame.
And I'm going to attach these the exact same way. And you could do the same thing with a grapevine wreath. Just, I know that a lot of times grapevine wreaths can be $5 or more. So I wanted to show you how you can do it where it's not as expensive. So right here I had a hole, but I didn't want to add zip ties, so I'm just going to glue it to what's already there. And this glue holds really well, so I don't have to worry about it coming undone. You just want to keep adding until you're happy with everything and there's no giant, like, big dips where there's nothing there. But that's it. That's how I made my very no grapevine wreath. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can email me at craftingwithlee at yahoo.com. Thanks so much for watching and if you learned anything today or like my video, please like, share, and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thank you.